Today we're going to take a look at the Oculus Fit Pack, but before we do, uh, I need to say a big thank you to Andrew Levy, who actually donated this to the channel. He bought it for himself. He said neither um, of the facial interfaces fitted him any better than the standard one, so he's got no use for it. He said, Carl, if you wanted to do a review, I'm happy to send it over to you. So I was very, very thankful to Andrew for that. He also sent me a picture of his Escort RS Turbo. Some of you um, more of my sim racing viewers will know that I tune or restore RS turbos for a living. So I'll stick a quick picture up of Andrew's car now. Uh, I think when he when he got it, he, he said it was about 3,000 miles or something like that. So it would have been a really nice example at the time. Anyway, back to the fit pack, which is what we're here for. So very, very quickly comes in standard sort of Oculus style packaging. Nobody cares. Uh, and we get two facial interfaces in little bags and we get a pair of these, I'm gonna call them no shrouds because the idea is they stop more light leakage from coming up around your nose. And that's something that was missing from the original facial interface. And that's still of course missing from these ones uh, compared to the likes of VR cover or AMVR, they have a nose shroud and that can make a big difference all depending on your face shape, about how much light leakage you get in. For me, the VR cover one was worse than just one of these, um, but the AM VR cover one fitted me absolutely perfectly, no light leakage anywhere. So um, they are useful, you just gotta find the ones that fit you the best. So what you get here is you get a narrow facial interface and you get a wide facial interface, they are labeled W, I mean, this is almost pointless showing you, but I might as well, and N for narrow and wide. Now, for me, the narrow is a bit too narrow and the wide is a bit too wide. The standard facial interface width is pretty much okay for me. I'll just sort of put them on and show you. I mean, this, it, it, they push a little snugger once they're actually fitted into the headset. I could use this one, but the standard one fits just a touch nicer. That's the narrow one. So again, if you look at my face, uh, and you think you've got a similar shape or size, this might give you some idea about whether these are of any use to you. And this is the wide one, and you can see, like, I can get a finger down either side there, even if I sort of push in the sides a little bit to simulate it being in the headset. So there's quite a difference between the wide and the narrow, and the standard one obviously fits somewhere in the middle. So why you might want this, perhaps the standard one gives you a similar effect to the wide one. You've got a lot of light leakage at the side, it's a bit too wide, in which case the narrow one um, might be for you. Or perhaps, like when I'm wearing this one, it's actually just a touch snug on my face. Maybe you have that experience with the standard one and you want the slightly wider one. So these are the reasons why you might want these. Um, as other reviewers have said, it's a shame you can't buy them individually because you can't have both a wide face and a narrow face. So why would anybody on the planet need two different size facial interfaces, or in total giving them three? I mean, you, you could say, oh, maybe they share the headset with somebody. Maybe they do, but I bet you a lot of Quest 2 owners don't, you know? In which case, you're just paying for something you don't need, i.e. a second facial interface in the kit when you could just buy the wide one if you need a wide one, or the narrow one if you need a narrow one. So, little bit silly, but hey, who are we to question Facebook? So then the other thing they come with is these, as I showed you earlier, some instructions. They literally just push on to the lenses. I won't show you how to do it, it's just dicking about for no reason. Um, they literally just push on, and they're, they're sort of rubbery and, and squishy. And they provide your sort of nose shroud type, uh, type light blockage around here. And they do make a difference. I mean, they can't not, because as you can see, they protrude probably a good inch or so. So for me, they don't block the light out completely like the AMVR interface does. Of course, we, we know there's problems with that with the orange hue, um, but it fits well. So they don't block them out quite as well as the AMVR one does, but it does block out more than what I have with the standard facial interface. And I don't get a lot of light leakage with the standard face interface, but I do get some. And this blocks out, this sort of eliminates, I would say probably 90% of it. So for me, I'm gonna run these on my Quest. Obviously they're off here for me to show you, um, but I'll be sticking with the standard facial interface size for now. But 
that really is, um, you know, there's not much else to review. It's exactly the same material and build quality and everything as, as the one that comes with your Quest. The same foam, nothing's changed there. They're literally just a different size. So if you need one, you need one. And if you don't, you don't. There will be a link in the description if you do, if you do want to buy one. Um, and I guess if you need it, you need it. Simple as that, really, isn't it? Uh, I can't remember what the price is, 30, 40 quid? Something like that. Again, this was donated to me by Andrew. So once again, big thanks to Andrew for that. So I didn't actually have to pay for them. But, um, but I'm glad he sent them over because these, these make a difference and I'll be using those. But yeah, that's it. If you need a, a bigger or smaller one, you can buy them. If you want Oculus nose shrouds, you can buy those as part of the package as well. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Take it easy.